Hey friends, Pastor Kevin here and is glad that I can join you today and glad you're here watching on this channel. Thank you so much and it's so beautiful to see how this Facebook channel has been reaching people that I have lost contact with. It's been years and thank you, thank you, thank you for joining us. Thank you for the comments, thank you for the likes, thank you for sharing what I've been sharing across the miles. Appreciate it a whole bunch. Yesterday, uh, we were told that we were going to have some severe weather here in Oklahoma. Today is uh, April the 29th, 2020, and yesterday we were told we were going to have some severe weather, possibilities of golf ball size hail, and that it was going to come right over our town. Now, we were also told there was going to be some damaging wind as well as hail, and uh, there was going to be thunder and lightning. Very, very frightening. Too soon? Well, anyway, a dear friend of mine said that I could go and park my cars in his garage of a house that he has. So we took the shelter and we protected our vehicles. Very thankful for this friend. Storms can be very, very frightening. Here in Oklahoma, Oklahoma is known for its tornadoes. More than any other state, we are known to have a lot of tornadoes. Now we have earthquakes on top of it. Well, it's, a, it's tornado season in Tornado Alley for us. And each of us have weathered a number of storms in our lifetime. We will all face more. And I'm not talking about weather storms. I'm talking about emotional and spiritual storms, things that tug at our hearts, things that come our way and shake us up. Life storms, like physical storms, are not respecters of your finances, your status, or even how close to Jesus you are. As you are watching, you're in one of three boats right now. You're either going into a storm, coming out of a storm, or right now you are in a storm. It all happens to us. And I'm thankful for those who study weather, weathermen, or whatever you want, meteorologists, whatever you want to call them, they study those things and they give the information back to us so that when a storm is coming our way, we're able to say, okay, I'm going to be prepared. I know what's coming my way. But not all the time are we able to see or know what's coming our way. But there's things that we can do to be prepared no matter what. In the Bible, Jesus had just finished teaching, and he tells his disciples, go get in the boat and go to the other side. I'm going to join you a little later. I'm going up on the mountainside, and I'm going to spend some time in prayer. Jesus went up on the mountainside. Now, a side note of this, before every major miracle or major thing that Jesus encountered, he spent time in prayer. Hmm. Kind of made him weather wise, which is what we ought to do. Before anything, we ought to be spending time in prayer, seeking God's face as to what we ought to be doing. Jesus wasn't just prepared for the storm. He was preparing for what was coming up next and even farther down the road. So in those times that he needed to, pray, to, to prepare, he spent time with God the Father. Listen to what it says in Mark chapter 6, starting at verse 50. It says, because they saw, they all saw him and were terrified. So Jesus was walking across the water when they saw him. And they were terrified. Immediately he spoke to them and said, take courage, it is I, don't be afraid. Then he climbed into the boat with them and the wind died down. There is so much in this section of scripture of Mark 6 to unpack. Sometimes I have a little trouble wrapping my mind around all that was taking place and, and putting myself in their shoes to understand what was going on. When I read Mark 6, Jesus had been in the boat. He got into the boat. But before getting into the boat, when he was up in that place of prayer, he could see the disciples on the lake, in the storm, on the water. It was dark. Scripture says it was about three in the morning. And because of the storm, there must not have been a whole lot of light. And at three in the morning, the, the moon is going down. So there would not have been a whole lot of light. And there was a storm. But when Jesus starts walking on the water, they can see him, which is amazing to me. The disciples were afraid because of the storm. Add to their fear, they are seeing something that they have never seen before. Years ago, my dad and I were out on Table Rock Lake, and we had been doing some boating and some fishing, and all of a sudden, I look out and I see something I have never seen before, something swimming in the water. 
It wasn't the Loch Ness Monster, but it, to me, it could have been a monster. I don't know. I'd never seen anything like this before. And as we watched this thing, I just happened to have my camera with me. I took a few pictures, but when it got to the other side, I saw something I'd never seen before. I saw a deer walk up a cliff and into the woods. That's what that object swimming that I had never seen before was. It was a deer. The disciples had never seen anyone walk on the water, let alone in a storm. The waves and the wind, they didn't bother Jesus. They didn't overpower Jesus. Jesus knew he had power over them. You might say it wasn't Jesus' first rodeo. Because you go two chapters back to Mark chapter 4, Jesus is in a boat sleeping and a storm comes up. And the disciples are afraid they're going to drown. There's other boats watching to see how they're weathering the storm. And Jesus is at the stern of the boat. Jesus is where the rudder of the boat is. Jesus is where control of the boat is. The disciples are in the boat. And if it wasn't for the courage of Jesus Christ, the fearless Jesus Christ, the minnow would be lost. Okay. Bad pun. Should I be punished? Put in a penitentiary? When our storms arise... When we are shaken and tossed, do we act like the disciples in fear? The disciples saw the storm, not the Savior. Without a relationship with Jesus, without a relationship with the Christ, you're pretty much at sea without a paddle. But everything changes when we develop a personal, ongoing, and growing relationship with Jesus Christ. When we realize we are on board with him, not he is on board with us. We need to put him first. We need to put him in control so that when the storm approaches, we break out the life vest of his word and we hold on to it. I have a lengthy list of scriptures that I call my life verses, verses that I go back to when I face storms that give me the assurance that God is with me. One of them is his promise to never leave us nor forsake us. So as you go through this storm, and as we're coming out of the storm of COVID-19, let us be thankful that Jesus has been there all along and that we do not need to fear because he is with us. Let us pray. Father, Father in heaven, thank you for the promise to never leave us nor forsake us. You promise perfect peace for those whose mind is steadfast upon you. And Father, we trust in you. Thank you. Amen. Hey, folks, this Sunday, this Sunday, our governor has allowed us permission to start coming back to church. But wait! Yes, pay very close attention to what I have to say. Parents, bring your kids in. They need to hear this. They need to pay attention to this as we come back into this place. We will be open and we will follow the recommendations of the authority that is over us is in regards to our governor. As we enter into this new phase of how we are to do things, the coronavirus has not been defeated yet. But we need to be wise. We are not coming back into the church to do things like we have always done. For the last six weeks, we have learned to keep, so, keep six feet away from each other, to practice social distancing. Many have done a great job at that. But what has happened during this time is our immune system that has been used to fight off a lot of things has dropped its guard. So some of our immune systems have gotten weaker instead of stronger during this time. In this church, we love hugs. We love handshakes. But we can't do that at this time. We have our pew. You're sitting in my pew. No, we're going to have to sit with one row in between each of us. We're going to have to keep distance to our left and to our right as well. Families, I need you to sit together. Not some of you over there and some of you over here, but everybody in your family together because we are going to respect each other's personal space. We're not picking up little kids. We're not hugging on the little kids. That's their mommy and daddy's responsibility. We have got to protect one another. Uh, cover your mouth if you cough. 
Wear a mask if you need. Leave that row between us. Family, sit together. We have to do as we're told so we can get beyond this pandemic. Maybe next month things will open up a little bit more and we'll be even freer. But we have to practice what is wise and what is safe. If you're a seasoned adult, in fact, what the government, governor of the state of Oklahoma says, if you're between 18 and 65, come on. If you're under 18 or you're over 65, you better be doing some practice and some safe quarantine, some safe distance, some safety issues. If you stay home, it will not offend me. It will not offend us. We would rather have you safe and well than to battle the coronavirus. If you have children, well, you're welcome to bring them. But our nursery and children's church will not be meeting this Sunday. We'll probably not be meeting until July because of what our governor has asked us to do. Maybe sooner if they allow. But until that time, parents, I encourage you, bring something for your child to do that they can do quietly. Maybe that's coloring. Maybe that's drawing. Something that they can do quietly while they sit with you. Now, another thing is we've made some changes in the building while we've been away. Uh, our worship leader has been working hard and preparing a lot of things. And on Sunday morning, please do not come to me asking me a hundred questions of why, 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 why. Why is the piano in the foyer? Well, we couldn't put it in the basement. Let's just work together for the good and bring glory to God. We will begin worship at 1030. The building will be open around nine o'clock for you to come in and have a time of prayer. Not a time of socializing, socializing and gathering, but a time of prayer. Our worship team will come and warm up a little bit, but we must practice what has been asked of us so that we don't end up back where we were. We need to enter in the sanctuary in an attitude of prayer, in an attitude ready to worship with God. And we will worship how we practice at home. So get your worship on. Practice that today. Thank you.